Hello there fellow string slingers and welcome to a full run through of how to play In Your Words by Lamb of God. Brandon Valentine here and I have to say I am a little bit excited to teach you this because this is an awesome song. I have covered it before. As we see here, yes, 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 link through connectivity, the internet. Ha! Without any further ado, let's dive straight in, but before that quickly, I'm just simply tuned to drop D, nothing too crazy. Onwards to the high gain antics. So first cab off the rank, we're going to deal with the main riff that we have there, which is just... We're going to start off into it with this little bit of alternating between open and the octave on the D string, except we're going to start off with two hits on the open D string, and then the 12th fret on the D string, the octave. And then it's going to alternate between open and octave, open and octave, open and octave. And then that little part is just going to be the 11 on the A string, followed directly by the 12 on the D string. And then rotating that one little more time. And now we have this little riff to contend with there. So we're going to start that riff off with our middle finger on the 10th fret of the low D string up with our pinky to the 12 on the A, and then 10, 9, 8 on the low D. And then up to the A string again with a 10, 11, 8. And that's going to be nice and heavily palm muted as well. And so straight after that we're going to kick back into this part. But now instead of going around again another time, right when we hit that little 11, 12, we're gonna slide down to the fifth fret on the low D. We're gonna start off on the fifth fret of the low D. So five on the low D, pinky to the seven on the A, then five, four, three on the low D, and then up to the five on the A, five, six, three on the A string. But now back to the low D for a 5, 4, 3 again. Now skip a string up to the D string, the 5th fret. You can do this with your ring or your middle finger. If you can get your middle finger there, you'll be in a bit more of an easy position, but your ring finger can still do it too if you've got a pinky that's ready for a bit of action. So 5th fret on the D string, 4th fret, 6th fret on the A string, 5th fret, and then finalizing on the 6th fret of the D string. Good old fashioned tritone. And then of course, kicking right back into the start of that riff again, straight away. So let's go through that main riff now, slowly and with some tabs. So we're going to run through that main intro riff twice before jumping into the first half of the verse. The first half of the verse being... And so this pull-off is going to be on the 12th fret of the A string. And the pattern for that is just going to be 1, 2, pull off, pull off, 1, 2, pull off. So again, that's just 1, 2, pull off, pull off, 1, 2, pull off. So, drone on the D, swell up on the 11 of the A string, but still having the two open Ds ringing at the same time whilst your finger is fretting the 11th fret on the A string. So that part slowly is. Which is gonna start off with this little lick. Which is just three on the A string, two on the D string, three on the A string again, and then two on the A string. And then riding up to the G there, the fifth fret on the low D. Using your pinky to reach up to the eighth fret of the A string for a little bit of a change in voicing there, and pulling off to the 5 on the A string there. 
Now going down to the third fret on the low D, which is just three, three on the low D string, followed by a hammer on between two and three on the higher D string, and then two on the low D, two, two, five on the A string, sliding down to four on the A string. So finally, in this first half of the verse, we're going to go back to the... as we had the exact same as the first half, but then after it, as a tail, we're going to go down to... which, to me, is actually the hardest part of the song, because it's going to have a heavy reliance on your pinky, unless you're six foot seven and have monstrous hands like Paul Gilbert. Uh, slowly, this tail is... So on the low D string, that's just going to be three, two, one, three, two, one, open, three, six, three, open, three, six, three, seven, four on the A string. And so now let's go over that first half of the verse slowly and with some tabs. parts of the song but it's got a great groove to it and it's just thick and mean. <laughs> so we're gonna have a nice big chunks on the open string interchanged with pulling off with your finger barred across the three top frets. And that pattern is just gonna be And so after that, you're going to get followed by... Which is just going to be the octave shape, two strings higher and two frets higher. On the ninth fret, and then on the eighth fret. Now I give it a little bit of a... Little bit of a semitone yank, just for a bit of effect. And then back to the same. And then just a nice old... Power chord on the sixth fret of the A string. Followed by power chord on the 5th fret of the A string. Now, this has a very fluid right hand attached to it. So don't be too stoic about how you're using your picking hand. And so next, of course, we're going to kick into the chorus, which sounds like this. Nice little two-part chord, which is just going to be the your pinky on the eighth fret of the low D string, and your forefinger on the fifth fret, the D of the A string, followed by the exact opposite of that: pinky on the eighth fret of the A string, and forefinger on the fifth fret of the D string. Now you're going to go down to this chord, which you're going to expand out, which is just going to be forefinger on the 3rd fret of the D string and pinky way up on the 7. And now chunking down, 2, 2 on the low D, followed by the pinky on the A string, sliding from 5 to 4, same as the end of the verse. And then coming up to this final part, which is going to be just a nice chunk on the open D string, followed by a nice brutal pull down on the 1st string. So just before we start the second half of the chorus, we're going to hit up that little 7 there. Same as before. But now the same tail from the first half of the verse. The same 3, 3, 2, 3, 2, 2, 5, 4. And so all up that goes... Straight back into the main riff.
So obviously after this chorus we're going to kick straight back into the main riff and then straight into the verse, both halves of the verse again and straight into the chorus again. Pretty standard sort of intro, verse, chorus, intro, verse, chorus structure. And now this brings us to this breakdown section in this bridge, which is extremely simple, nothing besides open D string there, but you've got to be very wary of making sure that you are trapping it intensely, because this is meant to be tied. Now, I know that many of you out there may already know this, it being a heavy song, and you most likely being a metal fan who's played a million breakdowns in your life, and you know how to keep your notes tight and succinct. And so with this part, it is exclusively alternate picking. There's no double down strokes. And so now over the top of this breakdown comes this really nice and eerie kind of octave lead, which all you're going to do is just holding the octave shapes going up to the ninth fret of the A string. Down to the eighth. Up to the nine again. Down to the eighth. Down to the sixth. Back up to the nine. Down to the 8, up to the 9, up to the 11. Now this little lead has an odd relationship with the time. The best way I can describe it is creeping. It is just creeping behind the beat right there and that's what gives it this eerie darkness which I think is absolutely amazing. And so finally this brings us to the huge open expanse of the outro section here. This thing is huge, it's crushing. You imagine immediately things happening in slow motion. Things being pushed over in slow motion to this part. It's glorious. It's huge. And so in this section there are many parts, many layers. And so I'm going to break it up into three cascading parts. The bass rhythm, the octave melody that comes in, and this supportive lead that comes in close at the end. And we're going to go two rounds, two rounds, go till the end. And so firstly, let's get onto this chord structure, in which I'm firstly hitting a chord that's like a really super simple D major. It's basically just open D, open A, fourth fret on the D string, seventh fret on the G string. And so we're going to switch between that and a very similar chord where we're just going to shift down to same open D, same open A, except the 3rd fret on the D string and the 5th fret on the G string. And now, unlike a lot of metal songs, this is going to be a kind of oddly jingly and acoustic strumming pattern with your right hand. And so you're going to have this kind of organic flow with your right hand between the lower notes of the open D and the open A and then the higher voicings of the chord. And so over the top of that we're going to have this octave melody coming in in which we're just going to hold the good old fashioned octave shape, two strings up, two frets up, and we're going to play this. Uh, so whilst maintaining that octave chord shape, the places we're going to hit with that is just simply going to be five on the A string, up to nine then eight, down to three, and then a little seven, five, nine, eight. And so then now on the top of that comes the supporting lead. And so with this lead, the whole thing's on the high D string, and we're going to start it off with a pull-off. And so the picking pattern for this lead is simply going to be up on the 16th fret of the D string, going pull off one two, pull off pull off one two, pull off pull off one two, pull off pull off one two, up to the 17th fret, pull off one two, pull off pull off one two, pull off up to the 19th fret. Now with the double jump, in which we're going to have pull off one, pull off one, pull off one, pull off one. And so you put that all together and you get... And so now let's go through and do that lead slowly and with some tabs. And of course, Easy as hell to end it off, just a big old open D chord. 
Thank you very much for joining me today, everyone. I'm a big Lamb of God fan, so this sort of a video always makes me happy. And if you've enjoyed it all, make sure that you click the like button and click the subscribe button. And leave comments letting me know what sort of videos you'd like me to make in the future. And also, you know, it makes me look really favourable to the algorithms of YouTube. And, uh, we can sneak up there and, uh, hopefully I can gain more attention because I, I need it. Brandon Valentine here, guys. I'll see you next time.